everyone can play the game this morning because we have not that many kids here. So I need how about all right, partner up. We're gonna have to find somebody. Joseph, Carson, you guys partner up. Marley, Ellie. Alright. We are going to do a game that requires 415. 415? Yes, that's eight more than last week. Still trending in the right direction. Who's heard of Pac-Man? Speaking of video games. Yes. Who likes Pac-Man? You don't like Pac-Man? I, I like this show. You like the show, Pac-Man? I like the Pac-Man show. I like the, I like the game, but I like the Really? Who, who's played as Pac-Man? What could it be about? Shows? These are pretty good characters. I, I don't like uh, I play some parts. Some parts. At all. All right, so what's the goal of Pac-Man? Oh, you have to eat all the ghosts, and the ghosts can, and well, you don't want the ghosts uh, uh, touch you or you'll, 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 or
Can you see Barley right here? Carson right here. So you can't see. Right there. Carson. Alright, Claire, you remember the man? You remember the way to take him? Do it. Okay. Alright, you can walk with them. You just can't touch them or hold their hands or anything. You cannot touch them. Okay. Now we're going to go to Claire. Alright, Claire, you're going to go with 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 Claire. Claire, Claire, you're going to go with Claire. Alright, Claire, you're going to go with Claire. Alright, Claire, you're going to go with Claire. Alright, Claire, you're going to you ready? All right. Ready, Mark? You say go. Leah! 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 Oh, just turn around. Right! Right, Carson, right! Turn around again. Leah, Carson! You still going the right way. Turn around. Another left, Carl. The other left. There you go. Yeah, turn, turn around. Marley's got to make some moves. Somebody's got to make a move. Marley's killing it. Watch out for that chair, Marley. Left, Left, Marley. Straight hard. Green light. Right. Red light. Right. Oh, it's going to be close. Ooh, Gary's making a move on the inside. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Ellie did. See, Ellie's like, I like the Wii U. I played Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on my Switch. 
Oh, well, I'm not the disciplinary person. Anyway, so I'm standing in line for the Wii U. It's just, it's opening weekend, it just came out, and I'm standing in line there. I'm near the front of the line. I got there early in the morning. I didn't camp out, I'm not one of those weirdos. But I got there early in the morning, and I was standing in line. I was like, I'm about to get the Wii U today. And I was standing in line. I saw people, how many people were in front of me. I was, I was starting to worry. I was like, oh no, I may not be able to get a Wii U because there's X amount of people in front of me. I don't know how many Wii U's this game store has, or GameStop has, or that Walmart has, whatever. So as we inch closer and closer to the um, to the storefront to get into the store, I'm, there's a cold sweat going on. I'm worrying. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to get a Wii U. But as I walk in, I see this entire wall of Wii U's. And I thought, I'm going to get it. I'm going to spend my money. I'm going to be able to get it. And I'm going to be able to get a Wii U. And I did. So, really cool story, right? Now the year is 2017, okay? How old were y'all two years ago? Seven. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. There we go. Seven D eight. <laughs> How old were you in 2017, darling? Twenty. <laughs> in 2017, I was, I was 21 years old. Anyway, so it's 2017. And based on the success of the Wii U that Nintendo had, Nintendo came out with a new gaming system called the Nintendo Switch that we all know and love, right? Carson plays Smash Bros. on the Nintendo Switch, and he loves it, right? You can play, you can play so many different games. There's like four different controllers. What do you say, Jay? You can play Mario Kart. It has a like, cool little handle, right? Anyway, the Nintendo Switch is coming out. And this time, like, I'm older, and I'm like... I'm like the only adult in line at this point. There's like 12 year olds, 13 year olds, 10 year olds in front of me. Anyway, I'm getting like all ran up. This kid's kicking me from behind. His dad, this um, it's like 16 year olds scrolling on their phone, like not really knowing what's going on. And I'm just sitting in there, and that same thought comes to my mind. Like I got there early, but what if they run out? And I start to worry. I start to panic. I almost have a panic attack because I'm like, I want the Nintendo Switch, right? Yes, Marlon. You need to stop shopping. Uh -huh. Oh, well, guess what, Marley? Why didn't you tell me that in 2012 and 2017? <laughs> Marley, I've been in this church for three years. <laughs> this church has been here for almost 22 years. <laughs> yeah, this building's been here. Too. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I got the switch again, right? I got the new game system. But, okay, that's a silly illustration, but how many of y'all have ever worried before? Okay, I would hope everybody in this room would raise their hand. And, obviously, you're probably not going to be worried. Like, if you're Marley, you're going to shop online, you get your Wii U or your Nintendo Switch for certain. But, um, what are some things that you guys worry about? Yes, Carson? Um, I worry about, like, well, on the first day of school, I always worry about, like, See, school, like that very, that very first day of school is kind of a scary experience, isn't it? Because we kind of have an idea of who's in our classes. We kind of know who our teachers is, but it's a new experience, right? So the first day of school, like I'm right there. That was nerve-wracking. I worried a lot my first day of school going all the way up, even into college. So first day of school, I mean, there's, um, there's things like sickness, right, that come into our lives that affect our families that we worry about, right? And there may be things like we have this big party plan, we have a pool, we're going to have a swimming party, but the forecast, it says it's supposed to rain, right? Just this past weekend, I went on a retreat with the rest of the staff and eldership here, and we went to Lake Wadawi, and the entire time it said it was supposed to be raining. I'm just like, I don't want it to rain at the lake. Like, I want to go to the lake, I want to tube, I want to ride jet skis, I just want to have fun. So I worried about that. But um, why do you think we worry so much? Yes, Marlon. Because, well, because we get nervous and it's new. It's new, yeah. So a lot of times why we get worried, especially for me, is because we don't have control of that situation, right? Like, think about it. 
I couldn't control how many Nintendo Switches or how many Wii U's or how many, um, what, what's something that y'all like to buy? Not associated with video games. Yeah. Yes, Carson. Uh, like, uh, I like to buy uh, Bakugan or Beyblades and all those things. Oh, that's a good one. What about you, Gabby? Slime. Huh? Slime. slime. How many of y'all like slime? Uh, y'all are weird. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Like so imagine if they ran out of slime at the store. You brought your $5. I'd cry. You would cry. Like, why? Why does this have to happen to me? See, but there's other things that we worry about, like school, like friends, like family. That adds worry into our life. See, but Jesus actually teaches on worry. And we find Jesus' teaching in um, the book of Matthew. Who wrote the book of Matthew? Any guesses? Yes, Jake. Matthew did. Matthew. <laughs> Good job, Marlon. So Matthew wrote the book of Matthew. Matthew was this disciple of Jesus, one of the 12 disciples, right? And he spent a lot of time with Jesus. And he spent a lot of time with Jesus. And he wrote this book to tell us who Jesus was and what he taught. And he specifically in Matthew 6, this is what we call part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus is teaching. See, there's this big crowd that surrounds Jesus and they want to hear his teaching. Because what Jesus is teaching in, his, in the Bible is something new that the people have never heard about. See, Jesus is talking about giving to the needy. He's talking about uh, marriage. He's talking about all these sorts of different new truths that these people haven't heard about. See, and Jesus, he's not teaching to like some CEO kind of guy. He's not teaching to the rich. He's not teaching to the famous. In fact, if he were to teach to anybody, it would be like us. Average, regular people. See, there's this huge crowd getting around him. And these people are curious about what Jesus has to say. And this is what Jesus has to say in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, in the middle of his message. He says, here, Claire, Gabby, y'all listen to him. He says, I tell you, do not worry. Don't worry about your life and what you'll eat or drink. And don't worry about your body and what you'll wear. Isn't there more to life than eating? Aren't there more important things for the body than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. They don't, uh, they don't plant or gather crops. They don't put away crops and storerooms. But your Father who's in heaven feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? So I'm going to ask you to bear with me because we're about to do an interview kind of style. Um, message. Are y'all okay with that? And if, like, I'm going to ask questions to people. Okay, so please, please just humor me for this, okay? Um, so I got these two friends. Their names are. So, in my left, I, this is embarrassing. I don't like to take it <laughs> like this. Okay, so on my left, which is your right. It's Miss Flora Potts. Y'all say hello, Miss Flora Potts. Hello, Miss Oh, say it like you're excited she's here. Hello. Oh. Yeah. And this is Sir Reginald Q. Featherbottom. What? Sir Reginald Q. Featherbottom. Featherbottom. Bottom. Everybody say hello, Sir Reginald Q. Featherbottom. Hello, Sir Reginald Q. Bottom. Marley, I took speech classes in third and fourth grade. That's not funny. Which I made fun of myself last week. It's okay. Okay, so I'm going to interview these guys. I'm going to interview Mr. Potts for a second. So, hey, forgive me for looking at my notes. The questions are on you. So, Ms. Potts, if I was to be bold today, you are looking very lovely. Like, you look very blooming, I would say. Um, you look very hydrated. So, um, oh, is that actually a new top story? Oh, it is. Okay, good. Um, so, how's everything? How's everything going? Oh, that's good. That's okay. That's really cool. Um, how are your saplings, your seedlings? <laughs> College already? It's like I just saw them two weeks ago. Oh, um, God, they grow up so fast. Um, okay, so enough of the like, introduction questions. Let's get to the really nitty and gritty, okay? So, um, what are some things in your life that you worry, that worry you? It's okay, you can take your time. <laughs> 
Okay, if you want to think on that question, Ms. Flora Potts, um, I'm, I'm going to go talk to Sir Reginald Keith Featherbottom, okay? Sir Featherbottom, can I call you Reginald? Okay, Sir Featherbottom it is. Okay, Sir Featherbottom, uh, first off, can I ask you how you were knighted? Like you were a knight. Are you from England? Do you know Sir Elton John? I'm only the adults get that joke. Okay, okay, this is not a real knight. Um, oh, so you do know Sir Elton John. I didn't, I didn't mean to bring up all those emotions, I'm sorry. Um, forget that, okay, so let me ask you the same thing, Sir Reginald Q. Featherbottom. What in your life is something that worries you? Oh, you have to think about it too? Um, but there's nothing really off the top of your head that y'all can think of. Miss Flora, do you not, um, do you not worry about a cloudy day? Imagine if somebody who's planted you didn't have a green thumb. Do you not worry about that? What about you, Mr. Rich, Sir Reginald, excuse me, Sir Featherbottom? Do you not worry about what you're going to eat? I mean, you're a bird. You have to find your own food. It's not like you can go to the grocery store. Nothing. Y'all give it up for Miss Flora. But and Sir Reginald Q. Featherbottom. Obviously, I wasn't having a real conversation with them. If you think I was, you guys are insane. But give this some thought. On your way to church this morning, on your way here, did you see any storage buildings for food for birds? No, right? Um, did you see any birds um, farming, cultivating a crop? No. No, that's impossible, right? That's silly. Um, what about for flowers? Did you see any beautiful factories making petals for flowers? No. no. See, even though the flower doesn't know what the weather's going to bring, if it's going to be stormy, if it's, it's going to be a drought, the bird doesn't know if it's going to have food to eat. They still don't worry. Because God will give them what they need. See, and if God gives the bird and gives the flower everything that they need, and he says we are worth more to him than the birds of the sky and the flower of the ground, don't you think God will give us what we need? See, and Jesus is teaching this truth. And he's teaching them that God is the ultimate source of everything, that we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't worry because we know that God will give us everything that we need and that God is in control. And in that truth, there's peace. I mean, think about, think about how peaceful it is to say, God, you're in complete control. See, a lot of times when I worry, like I said earlier, it's because I can't control the situation. I'm worried about what people are thinking about me. I'm worried about what people are saying about me. I'm worried about how good I do communicating. I worry about how, um, how much time I dedicate to work. We worry about our friends. We worry about our grades. We worry about our family. We worry about the people who, in our family who are sick or really sick. See, we worry about these things, and there's no peace in any of that, right? See, but if God was to give everything that the flowers and the birds need, that the birds don't worry about where their next meal is going to come from, that the God's going to feed the birds, and that he cares about us more than the birds, isn't he going to give us everything that we need? See, and the thing, the big difference here, here is God will give us everything we need, not what we want. See, there's a stark difference in that need and want. See, I want to have this much money off this big of house. But God's going to give me the money that he's going to give me the house that I need. He's going to give me the talents. He's going to give me the ability that I need to live out his gospel, to live out his will, right? He's going to provide for me. See, and when we say that, God, you're in complete control, there's peace in that. Because we're removing ourselves from that situation. See, and I know all this worry talk, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, seek your peace, seek your peace. Like, find it in Jesus. Find, really trust Jesus, right? We, we can say all those things, and it's hard to do that sometimes. And that's the last question I want to leave you with. And it's our bottom line for the day. How can we find peace 
even when live streams are. When we go into school that first first day of the school year, when our parents are getting a divorce, when we lose somebody we love, how can we find peace in that? Let's pray. God, we love you. God, we pray just to understand that you're the source of peace, God. God, I pray that we seek you, that we pursue you, that we chase after you, God. And God, that we trust you. Because none of us are in control of our lives, God. But God, I pray that we trust you. God, you will give us everything that we need to live a godly life. Everything we need to live this life, God. God, I pray that we believe that fact. I pray that we believe that truth, God. That you love us so much that you're going to die on the cross for us so we can have a relationship with you, so we can have true peace in you. God, I pray that we don't worry. Scripture is clear. Do not worry, but instead find peace in you, Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If I'm not mistaken, we're going to go into small groups now. Sorry, I'm not. I, I don't know everything. I'm just guessing. But, um, so, y'all, I'm guessing good for that. Hey, guys, thanks for coming to the middle of the room. That was really cool. Very uncomfortable for some of you. I get that, but thanks. Um, so, y'all split up in your small group and have awesome small group time.